You can see I put my Venn diagram back up here of customers and orders. And if I put every single order in the Northwind database into this diagram, all of the orders would fit in the intersection here. There is not a single order in the Northwind database that is orphaned. Okay, every order belongs to a customer. And the way that Northwind enforces that is by using a foreign key constraint on the SQL level. You can go check out my SQL playlist if you like. Now customers, however, let's just say these lines here are the customers. Most of the customers in the Northwind database have orders. But there's a few customers out here, whether they're new or they haven't ordered anything, we don't know, we don't care, but there are some customers in the Northwind database that do not have any orders. And we can figure out exactly which customers those are by using an outer join. We saw how to do an outer join and link in my last video, and in this video, we're going to use that exact same trick to find the customers that don't have any orders. So var customers without orders gets from c in db.customers join o in db.orders on c.customerid equals o.customerid. Nothing new there. We drop the into out here, and remember that join followed by an into will group the orders based on the customers, or using the customer as the key, the customer ID in this case. So we can come out here and say into this customer's orders. That's kind of a lengthy variable name, but I have enough screen space. Let's roll with it. And then using that information, we now have each customer with their sequence of orders. So for example, here's Maria again. And I can't remember exactly how many orders Maria has, but let's say she has five. And then let's do, I think I called him Joe in the last video. I can't remember. But let's say this is Joe, and Joe, he still has a sequence of orders out here, but there's nothing in there. All right, maybe it would help you if I wrapped this sequence of Maria's orders in a box here. Joe also has a sequence, or a set, if you would, to be database perfectly correct, a set of orders, but there's nothing in there. All right, so if C is Joe, then there will be nothing in Joe's customer's orders. So watch what kind of fancy trick I'm going to use here. I'll say where this customer's orders dot count. Count comes from link and it simply iterates over the number of elements in the sequence and counts them. Where the count is equal to zero, let's select C dot contact name. And since we're selecting a contact name, I'm going to replace var with I enumerable of string, control dot, enter because since we're selecting a contact name, then the end result of this query will be a sequence of strings. Okay, so let's use that result to print the names of customers that don't have any orders. For each string name in customers without orders, console write line name, control F5, let it run, drag it into the window, and it looks like Diego Roll and Mar Mary Bertrand haven't made any orders. So there are two customers in the Northwind database that haven't made any orders. And as always, before I leave you, let's translate this query. To hopefully, actually I'd use that as an exercise for you. You saw how I translated this in previous videos, so I encourage you to translate this on your own before watching me do it. But I'm going to do it here at the bottom. Let me grab this. Control C, Control V. Uh, remember from declares the query variable and the source. So I'll just put this down here, comment this out, db.customers.join, join, declares another variable and it takes as its first argument the source. So db.orders on c, c.customerid equals, turns into a comma, o, customer ID, and again, the C here comes from the C here, and the O here comes from the O that join declared. And of course, I forgot the group join part. This into out here followed by the join turns this into a group join, not just a join. Let me grab this variable name, copy it, control C, delete all that, comma, parentheses C with O's. I called it O's for this customer's orders. I suppose I could just paste that variable name in there, but just keep it simple. O's and then 
arrow. Let me put this on a new line. New. Remember, we're going to use this as a transparent identifier. C stays in scope. We get this customer's orders is the sequence of orders that comes into the Lambda function here, this OS. We'll just save it away as this customer's orders. Curly parenthesis dot control shift U and TP for transparent identifier. I was actually watching the videos and it hit me transparent identifier. I should have used TI. I'm not sure why I used TP. Maybe it's short for transparent. Anyway, we have a sequence of transparent identifiers. These things are being passed out of the group join and into the where. Let's drop the arrow. TP dot this customer's orders. Okay, that just falls into place there. Equals zero dot control shift U TP again arrow TP dot C dot contact name. There's the translation. Let's drop a two out here to differentiate it from this variable. And just to check that the output is identical, I shall paste that there. But grab this new variable with a two on there and also drop a new line in here just to make the output a little more readable. Control F5, and voila, we have the exact same result for the original query and for the translated query. Sorry, I went through that translation pretty quickly, but at this point in this playlist, I'm hoping you're used to seeing the translations and hopefully doing some translations on your own as well.